so Siri, we, uh, Siri picked up on that. I have six o'clock sharp, so I'd like to welcome everyone to our uh, USD 409 first meeting of the year 2023. Welcome everyone. It's good to see you out there. My first order of business today is for a motion for the ordering and approval of tonight's agenda as presented, please. I so move. I second. You. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Stephanie. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Tonight, first up, we have reports, and it's school board recognition month. So, Andrea Coppinger and... Oh, look at the awesome kiddos. Yay! Welcome, you guys. Come right on up. Welcome, welcome. Oh, I love their shirts. Oh, my goodness, those shirts are so cute. January is School Board Appreciation Appreciation Month, and we, along with the entire student body, would like to take this moment to thank our school board members. We know that the job of school board member is tough, the hours are long, and the thanks are few and far between. Our school board members volunteer their time and spend countless hours preparing to make decisions, participating in me meetings and attending school activities and events. Our locally elected school board is deeply rooted in U.S. tradition, as is public educa education. Our state has a proud tradition of support for public education, and in fact, in 1966, the people of Kansas amended our state's constitution to specifically call for local public schools that are maintained, developed, and operated by locally elective boards. Although thank you isn't truly enough to express our gratitude to all of you who work tirelessly on behalf of our staff and students, we do thank you for the, from the bottom of our hearts. USD 409 is an exemplary school district with a tradition of excellence and a vision for the future. It would not be the school district it, district it is today without you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. That was really very lovely and super, super sweet. Thank you. So moving on down, our agenda is today is the election of our board officers. And I'm going to get on this. Yeah. We are required to elect a president and vice president at the organizational meeting in January of every year. I will preside over the election, and the election should be carried out according to generally accepted rules of order for public boards. As with all votes of the board, four affirmative votes are required to elect each office. So I would entertain a motion if someone has one. I'm going to start with one or the other first. Does it matter? Sure. Madam President, I move to nominate Carrie Sowers as president. Mark, I'll second that. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Yes, just a thank, thank you, you for being our <laughs> fun, fearless leader. <laughs> thank you. It really is my honor, so thank you. Um, seeing no, no discussion, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much, and it passes unanimously. And thank you all very, very much thank for your you, trust. Mary. It means a lot. Next. Madam President. I move to nominate Diane Leach as Vice President for the year 2023. May I have a second, please? Second. And discussion right back. Um, Diane works hard and very, very, very thorough, and it is a pleasure to work with her on this board. Any other discussion? It's been a pleasure to work with both of you as our leadership. You've got a year under your belt now. Yeah, I have a year under my belt. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you both. Thank you so much. That's so kind. Um, seeing no other discussion, all in favor, raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. Thank you so much. Welcome aboard again, Diane. We make a good partnership. Right in front of you there. All right. This fearless. That's right. Okay. So next, um, I would entertain a motion for the approval of tonight's consent agenda as presented. Okay. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on any of those? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. Thank you so much. Next is our action items, and we have a reaffirm of the board policies um, that I'll let Mrs. Honeywell uh, visit with us about. Thank you. 
Yep, so this is the second read for these policies, just part of our normal continuous um, look at our policies, and there were no changes to these. May I have a motion, please? I motion that we accept or reaffirm the policies GBRE through GGCA. Ms. Sickett, any discussion on any of those? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. Thank you so much. Next is our school transportation um, contract that will be ending in 2023. And I'm going to let Dr. Nugent uh, visit with us about that. Sure. This is the second, um, essentially, just a, a quick review of the presentation from December. Uh, in December, I uh, reminded the board that our five-year contract with, it was Apple Bus changed, uh, bought out by first student, expires June 30th, um, coming up with this year. And so I presented three potential options for consideration. The first would be to continue with um, first student, formerly Apple Bus, for a one-year contract extension just to um, see how that transition goes. Um, option two could be to put out an RFPE and select another contracted company for another three to five years. And option three would be discontinue contractual services and resume our own transportation department. Mm -hmm. And again, I went um, through a lot of the pros and cons of all three options. Um, one con was the pricing for that extended year with Apple Bus slash First Student was going to be uh, considerably more. Now, as are all prices right now. So, I mean, that is, and that excludes um, their price increase does exclude um, uh, fuel because we, we still pay for our own fuel anyway. Um, the second was to consider that RFP and, um, and that is still an option. And then the third was to resume our own department and the pros would be we would have the ability to really hire our own personnel. As I explained the last time, the majority of after hours calls that I receive are in regards to transportation issues, and that's quite frustrating when then I have zero control over those calls. And so um, I think it would be nice to consider others. Now we know with any, with any kind of a transition, whether it's an RFP out, whether we take our own or through first student, we're gonna see normal hiccups, transition hiccups, um, and we have outsourced that transportation prior to when I got here. Um, so I'm saying for at least eight years, probably closer to 10, um, we will be having to dig into capital funds for operational startup, but that's um, that would be the same with the RFP out as well. Um, and then I had shared with you the process for our startup would, would be to use um, DS bus lines as just to help us kickstart, especially buying buses. We would look at um, a few purchased outright, a few lease purchased, and some new. So we could get a transportation uh, bus rotation back in order because obviously that's, that's the biggest expense starting. We would advertise and hire for all positions, begin the process of obtaining buses, obtain the necessary technology, start the routing training process, and then uh, begin uh, approximately July 1 with the whole process. So, um, again, it's my recommendation to the board for your consideration. <coughs> At this point, I'm really leaning uh, for, for you to consider um, option three, where we resume our own transportation, but all three had pros and cons, and I'm open to any discussion or thoughts or questions the board may have. As of right now, as, as of right now with um, first student, uh, how many bus drivers are we short? Well, right now we're fully hired with first student for the first time in a long time, but we have very few subs. And so um, our director often has to sub as well as bringing in sub drivers th through St. Joe, Missouri. But we're actually um, fully staffed on day-to-day -day with transportation right now. Good. 
and those are mainly local drivers. Mainly, yes. So mm -hmm. they yes. would hopefully stay on with us. Correct. And as you saw in my option three, we one of the perks we believe to retain and recruit drivers, uh, currently with, with first student, drivers are guaranteed four and a half hours a day. We would give them a four and a half hour a day option, similar to what they have now, or a six and a half hour a day so they could receive benefits and we would place them throughout the district on those off hours, maybe as lunchroom supervisors, um, maintenance help, so they could get additional hours. Um, that was part of our proposal for taking it on their own so we could have a better chance to recruit and retain. That's great, I like that idea. Um, Carrie and Diane, were you both here when we transitioned from mm -hmm. one to the other? What were the reasons that we went from <clears throat> our own to? It's been, it's been what, about 10 years ago? Yeah. Uh -uh. One of the main reasons was our buses were aging. We had 20-year-old buses, 15-year-old oh, right. yeah. buses, 10-year-old buses. Um, our fleet was aging. We had um, the director of transportation at the time was retiring and there really wasn't anybody at that moment to step up and take his place there were it, it was mainly the bus issue yeah. and we really at that time there wasn't funding to buy buses to buy um, anything and that we felt was a good we thought we would save a little money but it really doesn't um, at all it did work those beginning it did. years. The first, it, it, yes, yes. The Apple bus was mm -hmm. uh, well staffed, well managed, and I don't think the uh, mm -hmm. number of problems that from Apple bus to USD 409 were, they, that flow wasn't happening like it is right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it, was, it was a good move at the time. But at the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Nugent, you touched upon the, uh, the rising costs to transportation everywhere. Um, is that primarily due to personnel issues or um, I'm just trying to wrap my head around where other districts may be struggling as well to mm -hmm. understand better? Right, um, it, it kind of comes down to the things that Carrie and Diane just said, the transportation, the, the districts that have their own transportation, those who have a good director, um, and have really maintained that rotation of a fleet, mm -hmm. have success, but the minute you let that rotation get out, um, then you can, depending on the cost and availability. Right now where most districts are struggling was three years ago when COVID hit, um, we continued across the state and nation to pay transportation because those workers were depending on it. Um, but then uh, th those buses continue to be used for like summer school and lunches. So you still had the wear and tear on the buses, not to the extremes of daily routing, but you did have. So then when it was time to trade out buses, there was a, a shortage of actual buses to order. And that was my greatest concern going into making a recommendation to you. Are we going to be able to access buses, especially bus buses that have some accessibility features that some of our special education students need? Hence, I reached out to DS uh, because they are a sister company with a bus company and said, we, we would make sure that Atchison had buses for next year. That would be a guarantee from them. But yeah, the rising costs are just really right now related to inflation nationwide and just hard to get, hard to get buses in general. Um, I, the thing I, I really enjoyed when we think about our own taking it back over is we're so big on relationship, connection, and really if the bus drivers are in the buildings and the kids see the bus drivers, maybe there'll be a different you know relationship built as well. We'll be able to train our own bus drivers with expectations that 409 has and not a bus company. Um, I think it's, in my mind, because I do, the most calls all of us get is something about the bus. And if you call after a certain time, there's no one there where we have principals and everything that we could call if it was our own, you know. So I, I think it's a great idea 
And are we take we are taking action on this tonight? Yeah. I was going to ask that we take action tonight just so we can start developing the job descriptions and get things advertised mm -hmm. and out, but I'm not opposed if you need another month as well. Um, but that does push us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd really like to get some advertising out. I would like to meet with Apple and, and walk them through the transition and also, um, um, you know, really start having conversations with our current drivers who mm -hmm. wants to stay. Yeah, well, it's almost like you're killing two birds with one stone in some respects because I think one of the reasons it's hard to get good bus drivers is because of the schedule. Whereas if, you know, somebody needed more employment than just those hours, mm -hmm. we can provide that yeah. to them. And I think that mm -hmm. that's a good situation. Right. Right, so we're in a little bit of a conundrum where uh, we use a lot of paraprofessionals for lunch, but we can't use any special education funding to pay for paraprofessionals to do lunch duty. So this could actually really help us in that area by not ha accruing so much overtime and such for, for those folks, because our, a lot of our paras then would also like to work basketball games, and then they're clocking in for three different types of work. and. And this way we keep them in the classrooms working with kids versus lunch duty. And so we think it could be a win-win. It's gonna be an experiment. And we do have a lot of bus drivers who are retired and really only want that four and a half hours. And that's fine too, we'll respect that. But if, if there's an opportunity for someone to say, I would like to drive a bus, but I cannot live on four and a half hours, or I really need insurance, okay, we can, we can do that. Anxious to try that. Mm -hmm. I'd entertain a motion if anyone has one. If we're, I will make a motion that we discontinue the mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I move that we discontinue contractual services for our transportation and uh, resume our own transportation department. I'll second that. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Sean. Any other discussion? Seeing that, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Seeing none. Don't mind me. I'm very Seeing none. Uh, all in favor, raise your right hand. I, this is great. Passes unanimously. Thank you so much. Next is uh, our March 2023 um, meeting falls on March 13th. That's spring break. So is everyone okay the week before, which would be March the sixth? Okay. I would entertain a motion, please, for that. I move that we uh, accept the uh, stated dates for our meetings. Okay. I'll second. Thank you. So instead of it being Actually, March. for the March meeting. For March meeting. It'll be March, from March 13th to March the 6th. Yep. Okay. I move that we accept the March date. Perfect. <laughs> I, I like it. it. <laughs> Second? <clears throat> Second. Okay, thank you, Sally. Any discussion? All right. All in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Um, there is a resolution, and I'm on my, to establish meeting dates and times, and there is a resolution if someone would want to read that. Diane, maybe? Yeah, hang on, let me find it here okay. again. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Sally. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. Be, it, Be it resolved that pursuant to <coughs> KSA 72-1138, the Board of Education of Unified School District number 409 Atchison County, Kansas, at its regular meeting held on the 9th day of January, 2023, established the following meeting schedule for regular Board of Education meetings to be held, <clears throat> excuse me, during uh, 2023 calendar year. The Board of Education shall meet on the second Monday of each month. All regular meetings will commence at 6 p.m. and will be held in the Board of Education office at 626 Commercial Street, Atchison, Kansas. If the established meeting date falls on a legal holiday or a holiday specified by the Board of Education, 
Such regular meeting will be held on the following day, commencing at the same hour. A summary of the regular Board of Education meetings for the 2023 calendar year are scheduled as follows. Did I read down to that? Monday, January 9th, 2023, 6 p.m., Board of Education. Monday, February 13th, 2023, 6 p.m., Board of Education. Monday, March 6th, 2023, 6 p.m., Board of Education. Monday, April 10th, 2023, 6 p.m., Board of Education. Monday, May 8th, 6 p.m., Board of Education. Monday, June 12th, 2023, 6 p.m., Board of Education. Monday, July 10th, 2023, 6 p.m., Board of Education. Monday, August 14th, 2023, 6 p.m., Board of Education. Monday, September 11th, 2023, 6 p.m., Board of Education. Monday, October 9th, 2023, 6 p.m., Board of Education. Monday, November 13th, 2023, 6 p.m., Board of Education. Monday, December 11th, 6 p.m., Board of Education. Perfect. Okay. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Thank you so much. Any discussion on that resolution? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Passes unanimously. Okay. Next is our. Um, well, I just did that. And it won't come down. There we go. Next is to, a, we start to appoint um, all the organizational items um, and KESB governmental relations, the delegate, et cetera. Do we, we go each line item, is that correct? Or can we do them all and then have a vote at the end? We can do it either way. How we break up do it. Okay. Uh, how about we do it all and then uh, vote at the end? Is okay, do you have them? Yeah. Okay, so first up, oh, sorry, thank you. First up is to appoint a KASB Governmental Relation Network representative. And last year it was Sally Berger. And did you want to continue that, Sally? I would continue it. And I think I, I think I did it as well. Mm -hmm. I have down that I was the representative yes, and Sally were, was the alternate. You served, yes. Well, I yes. think I think this is even different than that. I no. think that one is the yeah. delegate assembly. I think it's next, and that's yeah. where it's we reversed it. So, so, Diane, would you want again, or what would what would? I am fine to continue, but I know if there's been some discussion among some of us, if somebody else wants to, if we want to switch some of this around, just speak mm -hmm. up. If that's Please something do. you're interested yeah. in, this is really just following KESB and making sure, just like Sally passed out something that she mm -hmm. found online uh, today. Um, just making sure that we're uh, using KESB to, to help us uh, mm -hmm. take care of our district. Yeah. So I'm happy to do it again, but if somebody else would like to try that position, that's okay too. I I would be interested in that position. You would probably be good at that actually because yeah, you've got somebody to talk to yeah. about it all the time. <laughs> yeah. You got so, inside info. I, like I don't it. want to kick anyone off. No, either. go go ahead. And then Sally, do you still want to be the alternate or vice versa? Either way. Okay. Okay. Or I can be the alternate. <laughs> okay. We're going to be so kind. I just know. So, yeah. So, Sally and Debbie on that. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Next is to appoint a KSB delegate, assemb delegate assembly representative. And Sally, I think you were that last That's year. The voting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And I would do that. Again. Okay. And I was your alternate. Somebody else can be the alternate if they want, or I will be the alternate. <laughs> where is the meeting next year? Kansas City? I'm not sure where it is. This was the first year we did it in person. Yeah. Yeah. Zoom, so. well. Do you want to do that or do you want to keep it, Diane? Either one. I'm great. 
I'm, I'm happy to be the alternate. Okay. Probably won't need to do it. But. So Sally and Diane's the alternate. The policy committee members, <clears throat> and on our policy committee members in the past, I believe it was Sean, Stephanie, and Sally. Are you all wanting to continue on that? Yeah, I would like to stay on. Okay. Okay. So we'll leave policy uh, the same. Um, next is um, Teacher of the Year Selection Committee. And Diane and Stephanie. I'm happy to stay on that. I am too, but if someone else wants to same, do it, that's fine. Here. But it's such a wonderful, yeah, it, it's the best it, to be it on. It is. It really <laughs> is. Anybody? Okay. So Sally and Stephanie stay. No, Diane and oh, Stephanie. Oh, Diane and Stephanie. I'm sorry, oh, Sally. Have three Thank you. I looked right at you and yeah, said Sally. Correct. Yeah, we, we can have a third if somebody would like to be on that. Mm-hmm. Do you want to be on that? Sure. Okay, so Sally will join you. Next is the Classified Employee of the Year. And I think okay. last year we just had, last several years we've just had it be the same committee because there okay. each just one meeting. So one Diane, meeting Stephanie, and Sally will do that. Okay, to Recreation Committee, I believe that was Sean and I. Do you want to stay on that? Anybody else want to be on the rec committee? It's fairly easy. Okay, I'll stay. And the sick and emergency leave pool committee, um, that was Stephanie and Brandy. Did you guys want to stay on that? Yeah, that was fine. And Thank you, whoever filled in mm -hmm. for us, because it was like in the middle of the day and we couldn't leave. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as long as our meetings are okay, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Later in the later in the afternoon would be great. Okay, so they'll stay. Activities committee. Um, that was Sally, John, and Sean. So would you want to be on that one, Debbie? I believe I was on that committee last year. That was just a mistake. Typo. Yeah. And I, would I was like going to go, wait, John was on that last year? Well, that was just a little bit of an error. <laughs> okay. That's the way Sally? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Sean, did you want to yes. remain on that? Good deal. So that'll be awesome. Um, wellness committee was Debbie and myself, but we'll stay on that. I'd like to continue. Great. Um. And the district wellness committee was us again. So I'm willing to stay if you, if you guys, unless someone else wants it. The calendar committee was Sally and Diane. Anybody want to? You good for that, Diane? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Sure am. Good for that. Stay we're, on that. Perfect. We're in meetings now. So yeah. And appoint a chief negotiator and team, which the, uh, Negotiator usually is um, Larry Mears, and team members were Diane Leach, Stephanie Gardner, and Carrie Sowers, along with Chad Bilderback. Um, would anyone like to step up to that or do that? I would be interested in stepping up to that. Okay. Larry. I know Lisa Pierce will be taking the spot of Chad Bilderback on that committee. Okay. Awesome. And Carrie, I can come off, so Debbie can. Okay, okay. So Diane, myself, and Debbie. And Lisa, good deal. So. And Nicole. And Nicole Honeywell, absolutely. And Larry will be that. Larry will be the chief negotiator. Okay. okay, perfect. So all the changes on our organizational items, et cetera, I would entertain a motion as presented Please. So moved. Thank you, Sean. May I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much, everyone, for jumping in and uh, giving your best to these committees. I appreciate that a lot.
Next, um, our items for discussion is a policy review. And again, Mrs. Honeywell will come up HAA through HA capital K. So there's a very, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a very short list for you today. So if you'll just take a critical look at these policies between now and the next month. Again, just part of our continuous review of our policies. No recommended changes from KASB at this time. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, so everybody will take a look at those and we'll bring those back next month. Executive session. And oops. Sorry. It I got knocked off here. Here it is. Yes, I do. Uh, Madam President, I move that the board go into oops, oh, the board go into executive session to discuss employment recommendations and individual employees' employment performance pursuant to non-elected personnel exception under KOMA, and the open meeting will resume in the boardroom at... Two, two minutes, you think? Uh, Twenty. Twenty. At eight, uh, seven o'clock. Okay. And we need to invite Larry and Lisa. And Larry and we will Lisa. invite Larry and Lisa. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Probably. Okay. May, I, may I have a second on that, please? Okay. Okay. And all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. See you in 20 minutes. I'm glad she said that. I will take that. Oh, and it wasn't cold and it wasn't cold in there. I thought you were looking to see if we were giggling or not. <laughs> I wish I could have heard that. Okay. And we're back in session. We were laughing. It was about this many. Uh, we do have some personnel action tonight. Oh, yeah, I got it. Get back in here. Yes. And Diane, did you want to read that personnel yes. list, please? Uh, Madam President, I move that we approve the following resignations. Karen Judd, Food Service Manager, Atchison Middle School, effective June 1st, 2023, for the purposes of retirement. Audra Berry, 12-month tw secretary, Atchison Middle School, effective December 30th, 2022. All second. Mm -hmm. Um. Sorry. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Next, I'm still trying to. I move that we accept the following employment recommendations for 2022-2023. Leah Rose Reckmeyer, long-term substitute teacher, Atchison Elementary School, effective December 13th, 2022. That's the only one. All second. Thank you so much. Any discussion? Go ahead. Yes. The reason that's on there for a substitute, that's one of our contracted long-term subs. So we pay her. That was one of our COVID-2 monies mm -hmm. where we had up to three contracted long-term subs, and she's one of those. So typically we won't put a long-term sub on the agenda, but she's an exception. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Um, seeing no more discussion, everyone in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. Next. I move that we accept the following transfers for 2022-2023. Charles Samanko, special education teacher, Atchison High School, to special education teacher, Atchison Elementary School, effective January 3rd, 2023. All second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. And finally, I move that we accept the following supplementals. Elizabeth Harris, new teacher mentor, spring semester, AMS. Rachel Crosswhite, lunch supervisor, spring semester, AHS. Craig Hansel, Hansel head soccer coach, AMS. Annie Shelvin, new teacher mentor, spring semester, AES. Charlie Harris, head softball coach, Atchison High School. Cersei Duncan, assistant softball, softball coach, Atchison High School. And Amanda Clark, fifth grade lunch supervisor, spring semester at AES. It's not Craig Hansel, is it? It's Craig Hansel. No, Hansel. 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 Okay. Hansel. Okay. Okay. You may have a second. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you so much. Passes unanimously. 
Let's have the best year yet. You guys, you do such a great job and you do with your heart, you lead, I see it. Let's have the best year in 2023. Seeing it, anything else, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Thank you, Sean, a second. Thank you, Brandy. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Have a great night and good year, guys. Thank you so much.